Welcome to a brand new episode of the Kitchen Talk podcast. I'm your host, Dan Kenny, and alongside you have Connor. Connor. Connor has come all the way from Cork um, to come up and share his experience through addiction and how he's recovering. I met Connor over in Portugal in April at the CA convention, and since then I've uh, been really, really good friends. Um, Connor's 24, 24, right? 24, yeah. So he's an inspiration to a lot of young, a, a, a lot of young lads out there um, and girls that he can look up to as an inspiration to how he, he's recovering. How long are you in recovery now? In recovery, I'd say about two and a half years, but coming up on 18 months. 18 months, sorry. 18 months, sorry. Well done. So yeah, Connor, look, we'll just we'll start off by where you're from and just take us back from the start, Connor. Yeah? yeah, I suppose my name is Connor. I'm from the real capital of Ireland, Cork, you know, <laughs> small place from Cove. I was born there, you know, I yeah. born, lived most of my life in Cove. Um, yeah, I suppose I grew up in a house, like my father was very old, like well, a lot older, like, you know, he was 56 when he was born, like, so growing up he would have been very 56 old. 56 when you were born? Mm. Oh, what a hero. Yeah, <laughs> still going, like, still going. Hold on, honest John, this is me, you know. <laughs> and, but yeah, growing up, like, I don't have a lot of memories about being very young, you know. Mm. But, like, I can remember being confused about what was good, like, stuff going on in my house. Like, I wasn't, I didn't know why it was happening, like, and I'd go to other people's houses when I was young, like, and I'd say, my oh, house, like, this is nothing like my house, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. every, like, Looking back, I suppose I was I was resentful, like of people who had normal houses and normal families, like because mine definitely wasn't like that, you know. And one of my clearest memories I have is when my mom left my dad, like we left together, like and I went to live at our friend's house, like and I, you know, I was very young. I was only six or seven. I didn't understand what was going on, like, and I wanted my parents to be together, like, you know. But uh, obviously, you grow up and you realize things, things. Go the way they're meant to go, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, sorry, I'm a bit nervous, like, you know. Oh, people who know me know I'm not a shy person, like, yeah. you know. But, uh, so it's lights, camera yeah, action. Yeah, it's lights, camera action, man. But look, it is what it is, man. It's only my story, like. And uh, I suppose that's where in school, like, looking back now, I realised, like, in school, why I was acting out, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I was a little shit in school. Like, I thought I always just wanted to do do the wrong thing, like, you know. Whatever the wrong thing was, I wanted to do it, like, and... You know, we thought we were like I was horrible in school, like, you know, I was nasty to other people and put people down, like, because oh, I didn't like my circumstances yeah. at home, you know. I'm more aware of it now, like, but like we thought we were brilliant because we made a teacher called Miss jo- her name was Miss Joy, we made her cry, like, you know, yeah. in the second class. And we thought that was hilarious, like, but the poor woman had a breakdown, like, you yeah. know, we were just melts like wrecking the head, like, you yeah. know. And like she's got a memory there of in school, like like my mother wouldn't have had a lot of money, like, you know. My mother would have barely scored by my dad had a few pounds, like, but I can remember I was in four class or something and my mum brought me to a car boot sale, you know, and I got these decent pair of boots, like, and they were only about four euro, you know, and mm. I thought it was brilliant, like, these class soccer boots were only four quid. And I remember bringing them into school and being like, no, lads, I got these at four euro in the car boot sale, man, did I get some slagging over that, <laughs> you know? And I felt, oh, I felt so small, man. Yeah. But, like, I know my mother done her best with me, you know, and my dad, too, like, struggled with a relationship with my dad, you know, I really did, like, like, he's from a completely different time, like, you know, and, like, old school, old school, man, like, you know, and, I would have been back and forth between my mum's and my dad's house, and, like, it's sad, but, like, I would have preferred being <coughs> at my dad's house, because my dad would buy me things I wanted, like, and my mum couldn't, and yeah. at the time, you don't understand, you're only a little kid, like, you know, you want everything, like, and, looking back now, like, my mother done the best she had, like, the best she could with what mm-hmm. she had, you know what I mean, like, you know, I think I was giving a choice then, like, where did I want to live permanently? Like, I'm just trying to think, I can't remember very distinctly, you know, but I think I chose my dad's, like, because I would do, I think, four nights and three nights, you know, and I would have moved around a lot. I would have moved around a lot uh, on my mum's side, like, you know, like, around Cove, like, different places. It was kind of hard, like, because you'd be just getting settled in somewhere and you'd be gone again, like, you know, renting places and stuff, and... And yeah, like I just love that and the bollocks with the lads around the place, you know, like just innocent stuff, baiting eggs off fellas or throwing eggs at cars and knocking on doors and shit. And just innocent child stuff. Yeah, yeah innocent child yeah, stuff. Yeah, like yeah. Even I think back, like when I was very close to my next door neighbour where I found him in Cove, you know, he was a big part of my journey, like he helped me a lot. Mm. And like I just think it was like we often laugh, like, but I would give his son a horrible time, like his son, his son had a farm of Tourette's, like, you know, and we thought it was the funniest thing ever, like it's sad. Sad when you look back, like you know, but you like 
the way I see it is that was escapism for you, like you were making him feel like shit it would help you forget about your stuff, yeah, like yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Mm. And I suppose like I, I won't go into too much detail, like but my mother went through something horrible with one of her exes, like you know, she I feel for her man, she used to never pick like she used to pick horrible fellas, like you know, fellas that just treated her badly, like and I always felt so helpless, like, because I was so young, like, you know, like, I could do nothing, like, you know, like, eight, nine, ten, like, and she went, like, she went through something very bad, like, with one of her exes, you know, and, like, I found out about it, like, and I, I can remember being young, like, it was probably 11 or 12, and I found the newspaper article, like, of what had happened to her, you know, in my dad's house, I was just looking around the place, and, like, it haunted me, man, you know, it really did, like, and she moved away, when I was a young lady, I was probably 12, 11 or 12 when she moved, she moved to England, like, just to get away from whatever, like, what happened to her, like, you know, don't want to go into too much detail about it, like, and, like, at the time, you know, you think not long about, like, but when I look back, that's when I would have first picked up alcohol and substances, you know, and, like, my dad would have, would have always talked horrible about my mum, you know, like, she would have went through something terrible with her ex-boyfriend, and my father would have said, Do you know, that's what you get for hanging around people like that, like, yeah. you know, and I always remember it, like, and, he was just nasty, like, towards her, you know, and they were kind of bored at it, like, you know, and you're only a kid, like, going from oh, each house yeah, to house, yeah, and you're going, yeah. they're both talking badly about each other, like, you know, and it was messed up, man, and, like, you know, I would have quickly picked up alcohol and substances then, you know, I suppose, it was probably 12, maybe about first year, you know, I remember, I couldn't tell you where, I, well, I suppose I would, I had three cans of Bulmers, you know, in a field next to, Next to the soccer pitch in Cove, you know, uh, St. Coleman's Park, it's called, like, uh, three cans of, uh, three cans of Bulmers, like, and I loved it, man, it was a crack, do you know what I mean, mm. like, just young, innocent, fun, man, I was doing laps at the soccer pitch outside, like, you know, and uh, it was brilliant, man, I couldn't wait to do it again, but do you know the times when you'd be going, like, hands on a pouch of tobacco and stuff, <laughs> you'd be chain smoking till you'd be paying your head, like, yeah. you know, and, like, I suppose I would have picked up, I would have smoked weed then quickly after that, like, you know, and, uh, you know, he, we used to, I can remember smoking it and being like, I can see you in the corners, you know, just playing on like that you're, <laughs> that you're seeing mad stuff because yeah. I suppose when you're young, you don't know, like, you know, those, those are the times where you probably be paying 50 quid for two giants or something, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. and ha happy to get it, like, you know, and uh, I should be looking at you with the camera. It's all good, mate. Yeah? Right, you're just a bit nervous, <laughs> just a bit nervous, you know? It's all good, mate. But, um, yeah, I suppose, and I took to it very fast, you know, and... I remember around this time I would have been um I would have watched that show Love Hate with my dad, you know? Yeah. And I was obsessed, man. I was obsessed with everything. Well, yeah. Everything that was yeah. in it, like, you know, and at a young age people that dreams what they wanted to be, that's what they wanted to do, like, you know? Shooting cats. Shooting cats, man. <laughs> King Nidge. King Manzi. Manzi was my nickname, like yeah. King Manzi on my pair of Air Maxes, you know? I was every link in Maxes. I just wanted them because Nidge had them, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I like, was just obsessed with that mad lifestyle. Like, and there wouldn't have been much of that around my area, like where I grew up, you know? It was quite an awful cul de sac, like, you know? Mm. But like, I was just attracted to that madness, like, you know, this fantasy lifestyle. And so yeah, I picked up drinking and smoking a bit of weed, man. And I suppose I took to the weed then, like, you know? And I'd say I was about, I was about 13, 14. I was 13, I got a. You know, and the lads, like, it was a big deal. We drove down, like, 20 minutes away, and we bought our first 50 bag, and we broke it up into knowledges, and we were banging it out, like, you yeah. know? And I loved it, man, that buzz, like, that yeah, fucking... Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, uh, think, like, ego at that age, you know what I mean? Like, and I suppose, bit by bit, I started getting more involved in it, like, you know, drinking cans with the lads, going to school, and in school, thinking about going drinking, you know, I said, I can't, me and Uncle Sandy were going down, in that, in the... The woods is where we used to go, like, and it was innocent fun, like, you know what I mean? There was no consequences, like, I never got caught drinking when I was young, yeah. like, you know, my dad was always a lot older, like, and it worked, it was a great advantage at the time, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, like, in hindsight, you would have rather been copped on to your stuff, like, but, um, I suppose then the weed, like, it progressed, you know, to find you found someone who'll give you a quarter and you send a 50 bag or two out of it, like, and I suppose I quickly found, I think it was about. I was probably 14 by then, though. I quickly found someone who'd give me an ounce of weed, you know. And I thought that was the dog of bollocks, man. Do you know, I said, yeah. oh, look at this, you know. And my dad would go play tennis on a Sunday, like, and I loved it then, man. I'd be up in the room and I'd be making up my bags, and it was just. Because you'd be so used to just seeing the 50 bags. Yeah, like, well, it's, it's, and it's, it's yeah. only an ounce yeah. of weed, like, and yeah. just big. And you'd have to cling, you'd be proper set up on the table, you'd have to cling, fill, and you'd be like, right, I'm going to be this, fella. 
um, and I loved him and you know I had found a fella who was older and he'd give it to me like in just complete fantasy at that time do you know what I mean like, and I carried on with that like and banging out on just oh man he's got the best of stuff like just complete yeah. ego like yeah. and I loved every bit of it that went with it you yeah. know just go <laughs> fantasy and build up like this is how I'm going to get to where I want to be and that building some sort of reputation for yourself mm, exactly like, that's yeah. a job I'm going to Manzi like you know and all yeah. that crap like but just wanting the wrong thing from life you know but like I was a young man like and I kept that that man I'd be drinking away happy old drinking once or twice a week you know going to school I couldn't stand school man I just couldn't focus you know I really couldn't man I hated every bit of sitting there mm. like you know what I mean I was nearly fucking vibrating in the chair ready to take off like and I suppose 15 is when 15 is when heavier drugs came into my life you know I never forget that night either man you know quarter of an ecstasy I took Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, one of the lads, yeah. 18th birthday party, I was home with all the lads, you know, you'd be just drawn to them, man. And, yeah, a quarter of a pink snail, man, you know, I'd never forget, like, oh, it was the best night of my life. Yeah. It was at the time. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? I was, like, going around the gaff, fucking jog, or flying, like, and smoking fags, and just thinking, this, this is it, like, mm. this is, I found what, it, I found what I've been looking for, like, you know, like, I didn't know at the time, but, like, looking back, you realise, I just, I things got I had stuff going on in my life that I couldn't um couldn't deal with like you know what I mean couldn't accept yeah. what's going yeah. on I'm a young man like you know and took to the ease of it took to water man you know mm. and I was always ending up at these house parties and I was always felt like the house party like how old is this fella like should he really be here like you know because I, I, I look young now like you remember when I looked like at fifteen you know yeah, yeah. and I still looked about ten like yeah, you know yeah, yeah. but like I just loved it man everything that went with it man and ecstasy started becoming a thing then for me you know. And like, it was in one of the largest shed, like I'm talking like 200 meters from where the person used to get them off mm. lived. Like, I was like, if this is meant, this is meant to be, you know what I mean? Like, it started getting hit, like, started really liking them, you know, and obviously I was starting to make a bit more money. The green side of things was progressing, like, you know, I'd you know, get half a bar and I was thinking this, like, I'm, not, like, I'm progressing here in the field that I want to progress in, like, complete madness, like, you know. Like the older fella telling me, going, my boss is five years older than me and you're five years younger, like, we're going to be the next yeah, thing, like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. feeding into it, like, I was only a kid, man, you know, but look, he was happy to just get rid of it, like, you know, and I was loving it, like, and scamming on the lads out of it, like, because we were only young, like, no one had the skills, you know, yeah. so, like, quarters were five pint two grams, like, off me, do you know what I mean, yeah, yeah. nobody had the skills, like, we're only young fellas, like, and uh, oh, I was looking, oh, they could never... I was, what could I get, take off, the, off myself? What could I take off this for myself extra? Do you know what I mean? Like, just dirty tactics, mm. like. And, um, yeah, I'm in New York, then I said, I started to take it in, and I loved it, man. Sneaking out the gaff, man. Do you know, and, like, he was always asleep. Like, it was, it was, my, op the opportunities were, were, there was big opportunities for me to do what I wanted. Yeah. I thought it was brilliant, man. My dad was always working and stuff as well. He worked a lot when I was younger, you know. And, um, 16 came then man and i had i was done with school like i was like you have to be 16 i think to legally leave school you know that's a junior cert, isn't it? something like that yeah so i done, I done the junior cert, i passed my junior cert, like and they wouldn't let me do they wouldn't let me do fortune like i wanted to do fortune like, and they wouldn't let me do and i was snapping man i actually had some resentment against mm. the school but i think that mm. because like there was fellas who were doing a lot worse things than me like and they were allowed to do it you know so i had to go straight into fifth year and i was like no nah. I'll never forget the first day of fifth year I fell down the stairs. Mm -hmm. Like, like my house going to school, you know, and I was like, fell all the way down the stairs, hit the door, I said, it's going to be a good year, you know, it's going to be a good year. <laughs> like, and 16 came, man, and two days after I turned 16, I left school, you know. I remember having a chat with the vice principal, like, and then she was like, do you think this is it? Do you think this is the right step for you? I said, look, this guy just hates school, like, you know, I said, it's just not for me, like, you know, it's really not, like, but surely, like, you know, what, it's not I couldn't take to it, I just didn't yeah. want to, you know, there were subjects I liked that I actually was interested in and I would do them, like, but I just hated being there, man, being told what to do, like, yeah. you know, and one of my greatest achievements, like, years ago, I thought was, we had a PE teacher mm. who told us, you're the worst class we've taught in 15 years, we were like, yes, yes, we've done it, like, that's yeah, what we're, yeah, yeah. yes, boys, and we'd, we'd be celebrating yeah, it, like, yeah. madness, man, you know, Mr. Callahan, i never forget her, man, and, um, but yeah, so I left school, man, and I went working one day a week, you know, in a restaurant, and it was like a fucking it was a half posh restaurant, like, you know. Mm -hmm. I was just working Sundays, like, and I don't know ways to make the money with the green at the time, like, and I loved it, man. Working one day a week, man, I was flat out, like, taking the yokes, you know, and 
Yeah, we're just brilliant, man. You know, there was no consequences. We were just in the gaffs, no fags. You know what I mean? Telling each other we loved each other, rubbing the dog and rubbing the, the, <laughs> the rugs, like, and just being like, ah, you know, just mushing out, like, and forgetting what you're talking about, like, yeah. having a full blown con- deep conversation. And one of the lads would just go, what are we talking about? <laughs> like, what the fuck? You know, your brain is being mush, like, you know, in 16, I'll never forget the time, like, 16, like, you know, we were sessioning on, and I was, session in Harman three, four times a week. I'd still end up going into that job. All of a sudden mm. they rattling and sweat coming out of me and having to deal with the public was horrific. Horrible. Horrible mm. stuff, you know. And they like, just doing stupid shit for a crack man, you know what mm. I mean? Like drinking fairy liquid or fucking drinking mosquito pies just for a crack like or pepper spray in ourselves like the stupid shit like but yeah. we thought it was hilarious yeah, like yeah, yeah. And one of the lads was licking chicken shit and one of the lads had chickens, you know, and he was gonna eat it, one of the lads wouldn't let him eat it, like, you know. We were like, why? And he was like, oh, you chicken if you eat that, <laughs> <laughs> if you eat that, he wondered what else, because if you eat that in a box head, I feel like, because we were like, because well, we were like, yeah, anything, yeah. just any stupid shit to get a crack off, man, you know. Mm. And 16, I suppose, is when my arch nemesis cocaine came into my life, you know. First time I tried it was at the bottom of a toothbrush at a house party. It felt nothing off at the first mm. time I tried it, you know. Second time, I remember it was a long time when we got there, you know, and go, and it's at a house party, like, and, you know, it's one of the lads had to come and he gave me, like, key, man, I remember being in the sitting room, and everyone went to sleep, and I was just up, you know, and I was like, man, what is, like, what is this, you know what yeah, I mean, like, yeah, this yeah. is unbelievable, like, do you know, and I said, I can't wait to try this again, like, I got my first bag and took for like three weeks or something, you know. Loved it, like, and we used to have the same down home too. It's two weeks practically free, like, you know, take yeah. it off, used to say. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But, like, I remember trying it, man, and, like, within three months, I got my first half ones, man, you know. It just progressed like that, man. I, and I remember we asked one of the lads, houses was me, and about two, three lads went through the whole thing, and they ended up going 25 euro, like, you know. And that's, that's how that pattern started for me, you know, of getting bits to sell my own, like, and, you weren't making that off your actually no, not nothing, nothing, nothing yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. And because yeah, like the man about was there like, and I just I loved the thrill of it man you know rapping I actually loved the all that went with it man you know weighing it up like and for fuck's sake but when we were young we started smoking and I made the cig- cigarettes and when your nose couldn't take anymore you could twizzle the fag mm. in it you know and you look half it like and it's just feels a weird feeling like I don't even know did you get anything it's off fucking of it, smoking you know? crack yeah it? pretty much man you know what I mean but yeah, man, it just progressed fast for me, and I loved all the bullshit that came with it. I, I suppose when I was 16 when I first got arrested, like, you know, I got arrested for taking a piss or something somewhere, you know, and I had a can in my pocket with the light, and, you know, getting carted off in the paddy wagon, big man, you know, in the back of the paddy wagon, then taking a picture, and slams on the bridge, what are you doing back there? Come back, they rip the phone at me, like, you know, and get, coming over the station, and over to the other, being like, yeah, boys. I was in there, I told them, fuck them, like, you know, I'm not doing what they say. Yeah. But no, no, this fucking face, like, when realistically I was in the cell, like, you scared little boy, like, you know what I mean? Thinking, thinking it was cool, as so like, oh, he got locked up, by he doesn't give a fuck, you know? Yeah. Complete nonsense that went with it, like, you know, I'm trying to, basically, I spent a lot of my younger years, like, you know, up until recently, pretending to be something I wasn't, like, do you know what I mean? Running away from that scared little boy I was as a child. Like, yeah. Do you know, I carried fear. I carried that fear into my addiction with me, like, you know what I mean? See, when you were going through all that type of addiction, mm. was your past still haunting you along the way? Like, I can't say I can... Because I, I think you do kind of forget, don't you? Like, when you're in that zone, that's that's your life now. It kind of blocks you. What fucking happened? Mm. Because you've done the problem through drinking and selling and all yeah. that stuff. That, that I think so too. Yeah. I think like doing all this shit helps me forget about all that stuff. Because yeah. like, I keep, like I definitely I don't even I can't even remember thinking yeah, about my mother, yeah, like, you know. Yeah. And I did miss her a lot, like, you know, because like you know you miss any of your parents. Like, my dad was always working, I was in the gap with myself most of the time, like it suited me at the time because yeah, you know, yeah. but like I suppose I couldn't get across what I wanted to get across. Like, you know, I'll never forget when I was, when I was like 16 at the time, yeah, oh man, I smiled and we started talking, things come back to you, like, do you know what I mean? I was probably 16 at the time and I got caught smoking weed by my family, like, do you know, and I remember, like, this is just smoking weed, you know, I was up to all sorts of stuff, like, you know, or was it, I think I could have been 15, you know, before, it could have been, sorry, I skipped a bit, it could have been before I actually tried heavier drugs. I remember my phone was broken, so I was using Facebook and the laptop or something, you know. Yeah. I just turned it off. Yeah, yeah. Um, my phone was broken at the time, like. So, 
No, you might. <laughs> it's, it's probably something very spiritual. Probably something very spiritual. Come on. Um, but yeah, my phone was broken, like, so I was using Facebook on the laptop, which I never done, you know. Yeah. And one of the days then, one of the days, uh, some my uncle rang me or something, goes, oh, your laptop, uh, your dad dropped your laptop and it broke, you know, so I'm bringing some fidelity and fixed it. I thought nothing of it, like, you know, when your man, your man rings me, he was fixing the laptop, he goes, I told you guys, I'm fixing the laptop, the screen and the laptop, he goes, I need the passcode to get into the laptop. So I gave it to him, like, I didn't think anything of Never used my laptop for Facebook, I was using it for two days. And there was messages on me, you know, I was asking something for half, a half an half ounce of green or something, whatever, you know. So there's this big family at the bench in Carl, like, you know, and I'm just denying everything to me. He said, come on, so we get on today. My uncle's like, it's going to the gas station, so on, say, You're, you were hacked, like, you know, and I was like, no, nah, look, I was, like, you know, this happened, like, in a big family around the table, like, and they were like, my auntie was actually over from um, Australia, she was involved in some treatment centre over there, some, you know, and she was over at the time, and there was this big family intervention, like, and I'll never forget it, man, it's not where they live, like, do you know, I was sent away from the house for like a day or two, me and my dad, and I came back, and everything was gone, and all my wires from the room, like, and I was like, what the, f- what the fuck's that happening here, you know? Big family intervention, and you like, and my auntie was there, and she said, like, look, this is before heavier drugs came into my life, you know, I remember clearly, I, was 15, I think I was 15, yeah, just smoking weed at this time, you know, drinking and stuff, and uh, my auntie came in with this box, you know, and didn't help, I had a DVD, um, called How to Make Money Selling Drugs, you know. Oh, God, didn't man. help my case, like, but <laughs> yeah, I did not help my case. But she comes in like, with this box and it ends, and, and she starts out. She goes, Look, as simple as this, you're gonna have to go to rehab. You're a drug addict, you're gonna have to. I'm so, 90 days, 90 nights, you're going to rehab. I was like, Just smoking with weed, man. Like, you know what I mean? Leave it out, like, fuck's sake. <laughs> Freak that man in. Box, cardboard box in, down. I hadn't even touched cocaine at this stage. Big salt shaker up in the table. This is what Connor's wrapping his cocaine up and selling it. I'm like, what? Looking around, or this is what he's, I don't know, is this for Connor's binge eating or is it for his, what he's cutting his cocaine up and like, and I was looking around, I thought it was something to joke, like, it's so clean for them. This is what Connor's wrapping his cocaine up and he's selling it. Oh, is this some sort of joke or something like, you know? I was looking around, like, what's going on here? And um, so they brought me to a treatment centre, like, Matt Talbot, you know? yeah, Matt Talbot. For adolescence, my mother was over as well from England at the time. She's, she's come over a couple of times. <coughs> we did for an assessment, like, yeah. you know, and it was like telling them everything, like, you know, and they were like, they were like Oh, why do you think you're hearing all this crap? And I was like, Oh, do you think there's something wrong with me? Like, you know, I'm just smoking a bit of weed, which I was at the time. Like, and I did go on to do everything they said I was going to yeah. do. But like, they brought, they assessed me, assessed the family, and brought us in together and said, Look, there's nothing wrong with Connor, like, he just likes to smoke a bit of weed. We don't think, uh, residential treatment is yeah. suitable like you know i was like yes fuck you like you know in my head like you know and um so i carried on anyway and i went to do went on to do all of us but i went to counselors like they brought me to counselors you know and i never forget i went to a counselor she was like makes you sign these confidentiality things mm. oh whatever you say here is between you like no problem sign and everything she said, why do you think you're here? And I said, do you think there's something wrong with me? Like, you know, I'm just going to smoke a bit of weed, like, you know, which there probably there was. I just, I couldn't open up a bottle at the time, you know what I mean? And, um, anyway. You tell us again about it at that time, wouldn't you? Sorry? I was forgetting about it at that time. I just wanted to be zoned in. And his new life, this yeah. new fantasy life, mm-hmm. and, you know, and chatting away for him, like, she brings family and asks, she goes, oh, well, Connor thinks he's here. Because do you think there's something wrong with him? And I was like, trust was gone then, like, how am I meant to trust? For me, I learned about this in treatment, like, that very hard for me to trust people after going through stuff like this. They brought me to two other counsellors, like, and I started having a bit of crack with the yeah. last, I started having a bit of fun with the last counsellor, like, you know, yeah. I started telling her I was fucking smoking heroin and robbing cars and shit, you know, like, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, 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 it was like, the model said, I was like, right, if we're going to be here, I was like, I said, look, don't tell them, no, like, but I'm smoking a bit of gear, like, I'm robbing a few cars or something, I was like 15, like, you know, there was murder, like, you know, and I was like, you're going to bring me to these places, I don't want to go here, like, I don't trust these people, like, you yeah. know, after breaking break, I might trust, like, I learned about that, like, and it made that hard for me to trust people, like, I went on, you know. Do you think you are not trusting people because of all, or you weren't trusting people before that? Do you know, a good question, man, I think, I, I think I trust, probably issues. before that, man, before but, it, yeah. but that's where I, de- uh, that's where yeah. I identified, yeah, identified trusting, yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean, like, yeah. and, uh, so, yeah, 16, 16, getting all, getting, you know, all this trouble, man, and working and trying to hold on that job. And I went to I got myself a job in, I go to, I went to Foley, the golf course, 
the golf course, yeah. I was working as a waiter down there. You know, just jumping from jobs. And um, I was walking down there for a while and there was a Polish guy working there, like, you know, he used to be giving us speed, like, and we thought it was the best thing, like, you know what I mean? Because mm. you weren't buzzing, like, you didn't want to listen to music, you were just in the zone, man, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, rough, dirty stuff, like, you know what I mean? Born the nostril after. Just thinking about it, I feel a bit sick, like, you know? And um, I can remember going into that job in horrible states, man, you know? And uh, I remember one night, because I used to be drinking when there was functions on, I'd be drinking, mm. like, you know? Mm. As a waiter, I used to be dancing, collecting glass, and I was waiting on one time, and they were like, you, you're coming to the after party, like, you know, and I was like, yes, you know, they were like, you're coming up with us, and um, went up to the, the re residence lounge, like, my buddy was working, and he was giving me free drinks, on and then uh, back out to, for four days, it's a bit of a drive, like, back out, collect a few bags, whatever, back out, in the house, in, they rent lodges up there, like, houses for people, you know, and they were like, oh, we're going to have a big party, like, and um, there was just, it ended up being me and one of, um, me and one of the room sisters, like, you know, and we were just still up to about 10 in the morning, just tipping out, sniffing away, man. And I thought that was, like, I thought that was brilliant, you know what I mean? Like, home then, not a wink of sleep, man. And, like, this stuff just continued for me, like, you know, and the coke was getting heavier and heavier, man, and I was getting bigger bits or whatever, like, and I found, I found a good source then, like, at the time, which which I thought was a good source, like, and I started, yeah. getting, I started dabbling in MDMA, like, which I thought was brilliant because I didn't want to take it as much. I couldn't take it as much. Like me and my experience with MDMA was like, you take a few bombs and you'd be happy out. You know what I mean? Like whereas with the coke, it was just there was you could never have enough with the coke. Like you yeah. know what I mean? So like the MDMA became a fun venture for me. Like yeah. you know, bombed out of it. Like and mm, I ended up getting it deep into that very fast, man. And, I used to get half a bar at a fairly decent price. It was a big club, like you know. Yeah. And yeah. I used to make I used to make serious money off it, like because mm. it's not something you want to be taking every night. Like I go, coke you, you would take it, yeah. man. You know what I mean? You wouldn't mind. You wouldn't feel the draw to it, man. Even sometimes, they, like sometimes you do the bollocks and you want it for a couple of days with the MDMA, but not all the time. Mm. Like, for me anyway, you know, You'd be fucking oh, you don't even know your own fucking name, man. You know, mm. drooling away like, and um. But yeah, the MDMA was a fun venture for me, like, you know, and yeah, I was still I'm drifting into about 16, 17 there, and 16, I took my first sleeping tablets, you know, I was about five sleeping tablets, and I can remember going around the fucking estate to Valley, like, you know what I mean, like, like my, my neighbour's mum said she saw me through the end of the trailer rubbing the side of my head, you know, just looking up going, sky, sky, out of it, like, so one time my dad knew I was off my head, you know. Yeah. I came in, he was like, you're fucking off your head, you know. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Do you know what I was talking about? Right, like, yeah. yeah. Just complete madness, man, you know. And I just continued this, man. I went on to work in a call centre. And even, like, looking back, right, I was only 17 at this time. And I started a job in a call centre. And this is where I first noticed powerless powerlessness over alcohol and substances was we had three weeks of training in for to work in a call center yeah, yeah. and um not a good place for someone who like ourselves you know what i mean like yeah, we'd be yeah, flat yeah. Out. but um they asked me to come out the night before our first day on the phones yeah and i said to them i goes no look i'm not going out i said i'll end up on the bag i said i know it, but i'm like it was 17 at the time and i said no, I know I'll end up in the bag. They're like, you want your grand? And I was like, all right, so they're like, no, there must have been one. I said, grand, out there anyway. One of them rocked up a bag, so I couldn't say no, do you know what I mean? Like, I ended up taking a couple of bags or whatever, like, and they all went to sleep. I could never sleep after, man. I would never, like, no drink left. Up the whole night, man. On the phone, saying straight away, man. You know, you get 10 cent coffees, like, and I was like, that long. Seven times, somebody asked to speak to my supervisor that day. I thought it was my first and my last day. I haven't eaten beef stroganoff since that day, because I edit. I got sick of the camera on the way home. Man. Oh, <laughs> dirty, dirty yeah. feeling about it. Yeah. I thought it was my first and my last day on the phone. It was a horrible experience. Yeah. Sweat dripping off me. And like, that's when I felt like, even at, seven, even at 17, I knew, no, oh, man, if I go drinking, I'm going to go in the bag. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's, looking back, like, even at that age, at that age, I, I knew something, I knew something was different, you yeah. know what I mean, like, and I could notice that people wanted to go home, like, and I was like, no, come on, we can definitely get another bag, you know, mm. we can get it some more, like, and, um, then I suppose the coke, we kind of took over, you know, getting heavier on body. Even at a young age, just thinking back there, like, you're 16 and 17, and you're staying out all night, most nights, mm. like, that's, that's crazy at that age. Crazy. You know, I was, I remember, when I was 15, 16, I was doing it, but, 
like I'd, I'd be in probably two three in the morning because I'd have to be in you know that way yeah. or else I'd make sure I'm getting kicked out for the night and crawl back in tomorrow but just the way you're speaking there it's like it was a continuous thing with you every week mm. was it yeah it definitely was man yeah I just took to it I just took yeah. to it very young man you know yeah yeah and it was just I was just obsessed with it man yeah. they went with it like the madness you know what I mean like and you're right like I, I started very young man yeah and I just like that man chasing the king needs fucking nice yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it is insane like and I suppose it is mad when you think about it like it's, it's like because at the time it was very normal like and yeah, yeah it's it was. not like it came from a yeah. place where like there was lots of people doing it at my mm. age you know like it wasn't the norm around the place like but um, like when people were doing normal things, like, I just wanted to get out of my head, like yeah. you know, and I loved, I loved every bit of it, like and it makes a lot of sense, like because I was obviously discontent in myself, you know, mm. I didn't like what was going on inside my head, like and I wanted to get away from it, and it done that for me for a very long time, like yeah. you know, and so yeah, like seventeen, eighteen, then man is when I started getting heavier involved in the deal inside of things, like you know, and I loved them, and getting bars of weed and fucking ounces of coke and. I just loved them, man, you know, people getting on to me, the whole interaction, like I said, backing it up, man. The preoccupation with it, you know, yeah. everything that went with it, like, but that alien paranoia started to become into my life, you know. I'd be in the house, like, and I would just, I would just get on edge a bit, you know, and I was like, like, I could identify the feeling, like, and it was a bad feeling, you know, it didn't used to come all the time, like, oh, I remember yeah. the first ever feeling of being paranoid, man. Rough, hard, mm. you know, man. Like, it was just progress after that, it never gets any easier mm. at all, man. Go ahead, yeah. But, yeah. but I, because it, it's mad you say that, like, because my buddy, there's a buddy of mine who'll be in recovery as well, you know. Mm. And he says, and he says, Connor, he says, it took me 20 odd years to get to that stage yeah. of that paranoia and psychosis that it got to you very fast, you know. And I'm grateful it did, man, you know, because like. Like at 18, I used to like, I would have done most of my drinking and use on my own, I'd say, you know. Yeah. yeah. I would just get bits to sell, and the moment that I would bump, then I couldn't leave the gap, you know. Mm. And like, I was just, I'd be putting grams into three lines, like, and I would just be taking them, and I, you know, you know that feeling, like, when you take too much, it's not even a jot, you're just kind of like, you yeah. really froze, yeah. man. The pain, the head, my, yeah. uh, my vision would go blurry, man. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Bad feeling, yeah. like, mm. and the madness about it is, you just wait. Or to calm down a little and you go again like fuck it's insanity yeah, man you know yeah. and i suppose at 18 at 18 I, I bought my first car i had a car before like an automatic before i knew how to drive properly like i was rallying around the place when i was younger when i was about 17 but 18 when i bought my first car i think i had a provisional license did i i, I might have had i can't remember to be honest but um, it's, not, it's not that long ago <laughs> you know what I mean? like years ago like you know i go ah it was a good while ago now, you know? i feel oh i feel yeah. mentally i feel like yeah. the long life yeah. thing you know what i mean mm. man because there's been so much carnage but 18 i remember i bought my first car for 500 quid and uh it was a sale of pizza man tax nct no insurance i don't know i'm I think I might have had a version. I don't think I did because I would have tried to insure it maybe. But anyway, uh, yeah, no insurance. Like, and I had it just tipping around the place, whatever. And it was one night then, man. I never forget. It was my first night drinking whiskey neat, you know. Like at eighteen, I became a daily drinker. I loved them, man. I loved going to the pub. Mm. Pub just around the corner, Clarks, like you know, small old man pub. Like I used to like look up to the lads in the yeah, bar, the yeah, older yeah. men, you know. They tell me stories back in the day, and I'd be like, oh, God. I used to dream about what stool would be mine. And yeah, 18, yeah. Man, thinking about fuck up, yeah, yeah, yeah. loving going in there all the good kind of like, yeah, and best thing, none of them went to my coke because they're all old as well. Yeah. You know, they didn't have to share with them, like, but they'd be like, this one is fucking, I'm stop showing shut up, like, you know. But, um, yeah, so it was my first time drinking whiskey in Nice, you know, that mm -hmm. night, and I was over in Russell, I was over in a housing estate, then taking a few tablets or whatever, like, and I got this notion that in Cove you can't get takeaway past 11 or 12 o'clock at night, you know. And uh, I got this, you know, it was like three in the morning, I got an ocean, I'd love a takeaway, like, you know. And like, they were like, man, there's nowhere open. I was like, I'd love a takeaway, you know. And they are like, there's nowhere open. I said, I'm getting a takeaway. So I would have walked back to my gaff. Like, it's, probably, it's not that far, like, but it's probably about 15 minute walk. Yeah. Walked back to my gaff, got the car, draw, like, I remember I had to drink no tablets and, you know, you'd be, you'd be mush, like, yeah. you know, downtown. I went everywhere, it was closed, of course, like, you know. And, uh, when we drove up the place on East Hill, like, beating up the road, you know, like, and coming along. 
coming along this road there past where the wolf torn would be like uh, roaches road it's called you know i can remember seeing how close like you get to the park cars without hitting the wood mm. you know clinging a few wing mirrors along the way like insanity and i had a foot to the floor <coughs> and i went to turn up bang hit the wall dead on man you know i ran play about 50 yards away from where the local lay and he went bang smacked the wall like and drove up into the, drove up into the car park like and just left and i could have left it there man and my insanity i i was i was caught up in a bit of trouble before that i'll go into it in a minute like but my insanity was i threw the key of the car away and i ran down to the car station and i said someone's after holding, holding me a knife point and forcing me to drive the car you know and they were like what are you talking about you know, so was like, they were like what are you talking about i said i swear to god man i got in the car and there was someone in the back of the car they were like like what are you talking about you know you stop talking shit i said i swear to god man oh that's the god no like and they didn't recognize me not because i suppose they didn't see me driving the car like, yeah. you know and like i could have just left the car there but my head was just mashed you know and i went back home like in i went to sleep didn't go to work the next day and they came up to my house and i kept going for about 10 minutes you know i was like yeah look there was one of these and i was like look boys i'm sorry and i said like Nobody helped me. I said, I can't really fucking know that, man. You know, they said, that shit would be on the six o'clock news if it did, you know what I mean? Yeah. But then she went out in the head going, I'm, I'm going to get locked up here for a false statement, like, you know? And, like, I suppose I skipped a bit over, but, like, the reason I was so paranoid about that was like, I was actually in Kosh about a couple of weeks before that. The guards raided my house when I, after I turned 18, and they found a bit of, a bit of grass and a bit of, and the, it, was just, it was just a bit of grass, you know? Mm. And um, that was a shock to me, like, because... I was only 18, like, and I was in my head, I was going, I know warning that they were coming or anything, like, but sure, like, that's how these things happen, yeah, like, yeah, I didn't yeah. know, I didn't know how it went, how these things went down, like, you know, and it was some shock, like, and you think that would stop me, like, but it didn't, man, it just drove me further into it, like, you know, and, like, that's when I started, that's when the, going to courts and all this shit used to start, you know, man, it was shit, but it was an awful feeling going up to the courthouse, you know what I mean? Terrified to go to prison. Terrified man, young mm. man like eighteen years old, and the first, I was in the cell a couple of times drunk like and yeah, that time I was caught with the weed like it was the first time I was in the cell sober you know and that was a bad feeling man mm. you know I was going could you imagine this uh, the cap just doesn't want to go could you imagine this twenty three hours a day or however long they're in there I was like and for that couple of hours I was like I'm done with this man you know mm. sure first phone call in and it's just back to it you know back to this normality yeah. like you know and. Actually, that first time, I just, that first time, I <coughs> remember I was, I was in one of the lads who was on a session. Yeah. And, um, it was St. Patrick's Day, 2017 or 18, I remember it well. And I was at a gaff party, not too far from my place, and my dad rang me. No, at the time I had, I think there was a quarter, a quarter of coke, an ounce of MDMA and three ounces of weed or something in, in my gaff, all in the bedroom, like, you know. And my dad rings me and was kind of the drug squad, we're at the house this morning, you better come home. And I was, my head was gone, I was, I'm getting locked up, man. So I'm going, I'm going straight to prison, like. And, um, like, I didn't even know how these things went. Like, I was asking dad, they're going to be around the road looking for me, like, or what, you know? So I, my dad picked me up and I went back to the office. I said, dad, would you think about moving away with me, like, you know? And he was like, look, I don't know, he'd see. Like, he was tired, he was mad, thing as well, mm -hmm. like. And, um, back to the gaff and I up, ran up to the room, you know. The coke I had, remember those amber leaf tins? Yeah. I had it slid under the bedside locker, yeah. You know? Bedside locker was pulled out from the wall, like, and the, I could see the tin was visible, like, when I came into the room, opened the tin and was still in there, you know? And I had the ounce of MDMA and a torch, I did the thing unscrewed, and it was in the torch, the torch was moved, opened it, it was still in there. They took the weed, like, they found the weed. Mm. I, my head was fried, I was like, I was like, they wait no to like, come out the gaff or yeah, something, like, yeah, you know? Yeah. I was like, it set up, man. There was yeah. something, you know, because it was only fresh, man. I was only 18, mm -hmm. I didn't know how these things And, like, I remember just getting all the gas straight away, and I was like, haunted, man. You know, I was like, oh, I could have been. And then, you know, your head big one, and I was going, like, did, did they do it on purpose? Like, yeah. watch, you know. But I uh, never sniffed coke so fast in my life than that day, you know what I mean? I like, bit and I went back to the boys' gaff, you know. And, like, yeah, so when I crashed the car, that, that's all I was thinking, I was like, I can't cough with this. I went down, I should have just left the car and fucked off, like, you know. Mm. So in and out of court for a while, but that thing going on, you know. Because you think you would, obviously I thought, you'd go in and put sort yourself out, or you'd go in and whatever would happen, like, and I didn't know it. I was like, I'll go to prison here, like, you know. Mm. And, uh, 
didn't know like you end up going to court like ten times for it, you know, because he keeps getting adjourned like. And then I ended up getting the I was caught with a bit more then as well, just green again. And they ended up they ended up dealing with him at the same time, which worked in my favour. And I got to I got the probation act, like thank God, you know what I mean? Because I, I genuinely thought I was going to prison, like. And um and yeah, man, that was just hassle, man, you know, and I thought that's what just went with it, like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like in this party life and getting involved with these people that I thought I wanted to be involved with, like, you know what I mean? It's I when shit comes to the fan, like hundred percent like or she hits the fan mm-hmm. she decide then it's like, oh fuck, what am I gonna do with her? Hundred percent man and I think it was about it was I nineteen then. I think it was nineteen when I went to one of the friends I grew up with around the block. The block, like I'm in Dublin, the block. <laughs> um when I was about nineteen I was in, I was at my friend's house party, like up here actually in Dublin, you know, she where was she? Oh, by the gallops, I don't know, you know, you ever heard of gallops? Oh, no. the south side, in the lip or I think. So, I was a friend of mine who grew up, but like, she was living up here, and it was her 18th birthday, like, and I came up for it, like, you know, and came up for it, and I brought up a bit, a bit of white with me, like, in a big house party, whatever, like, I was up for about two days, and that's where I met Paris, like, you know, and um, we fell mad, and you know, straight away, man, and something just, I just clicked with her, like, you know, and mm. we'd be up and down visiting each other. Actually, that night, I never... That was a good old night, but I remember I came up another time, like, and I was fat, I brought up, I think I brought up an eight ball with me or something, like, and I never forget I was running out, you know, and one of the girls said, oh, my cousin, I get, my cousin can get you stuff there, you know, and I was like, oh, how much is an eight? She was like, 140. I was like, 140? Bring on two of them, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I couldn't get over the yeah. price of it, like, I yeah. thought it was amazing, like, yeah. like that, that actually, night. I was probably one of the good, because I didn't get out much clubbing and stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. I was too, just fucking wanted to be in some sweaty house taking off, like, you know, talking shit. But that night I went to the academy, man. It was actually a really good night out, man. I wasn't mm-hmm. fucking tweaked that night. I was, I had a good crack, man, you know, and I was with Paris and I think a couple of her friends or something. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, me and Paris became a big thing, you know, Paris became a big part of my life, like, and... We actually were mad. I got matching tattoo. I won't show the camera now, like, but uh, we got matching tattoos. Mad tattoos, alien smoking. It looks like it's meant to be a cigarette. Like more, of, it looks more like a giant. You know what I mean? <laughs> but we got that after being like a couple of weeks together, and she moved to Cork with me. Yeah. And, and we got on really well, man. But we were just drinking and doing whatever else. Came flat out, like you know, and um, I suppose did I? She got she fell pregnant. Then I were we together for a year, and we moved. We moved to Dublin then, like and. And I put her through a lot, man, you know, I really did put her through a lot, like, uh, when she needed me, you know, I was, all I wanted to do was just drink and use, like, and I think I tried to stop then as well, like, because I, I left out there when I was 18, I was introduced to AA, you know, yeah. when I so crashed, <coughs> when I crashed that car, like, I wanted, I want, like, I wanted, I wanted to look good for court, you know, I want, like, I went to my first AA meeting, and I didn't try to identify with people, you know, I was just judging people. Older, yeah, yeah. My head was wrecked, man. It was like, like everyone was older than me, you know. Yeah. Was, what the fuck am I in common with these guys, you know? Mm. And everything they like everything they talked about I like, get now, you know what I mean? Like, a couple of years later, but I wasn't ready, like I didn't yeah. want to stop, you know what I mean? Just wanted the consequences to stop, I suppose, you know? And uh So yeah, me and Paris were like, freaking away and then she fell pregnant, man, and she became a rock of sense, man, and I didn't, mm. you know, I just I wanted to keep drinking, like, and her parents would joke when I would come up, you know, she'd be like, you're always drinking when you come up, you know, you know, you're probably an alcoholic, I'd be laughing away, like, you know, and I, I'd be laughing away, and, um, very ironic, you because know, like, I'd be like, oh, I'm on my holidays, you know, when I come up for the weekend, yeah, like, I'd be yeah, flat, yeah, and I'm not drinking, yeah. like, it's just the first thing I go for, like, the first thing, I remember, remember one of the first times, you know, it's been all over, but I remember my, one of my first times coming up here, I got off the bus straight into the pub O'Connell's, I think, Right by the key there, you know, and we get a point of Heineken or something, and a soup or something. Maybe I said, Sorry, I actually had to charge me 570 for the point of Heineken. She was welcome to Dublin, love, you know, because like, yeah. geez, that was years ago. I've been pint stone over about 420, like, mm-hmm. you know, and um, but yeah, I became pregnant, so she, we moved up here, and that was probably after a year, like, you know, and uh, we got pregnant during COVID, like, before that, we were flat out drinking, like, you know, flat out. I got a car on the road, the first car I got on the road legally insured and everything a month before when the lockdown was brilliant man you know we're driving everywhere like and it was the dog bollocks to be honest man mm. you know everyone everything was stopped the government were paying me money to sit at home like you know and drink away i was loving it man yeah you know lockdown was 
not good for my addiction, but like she loves him and not having with the work. And, and she, Paris, fell pregnant, you know, and um, I thought that was going to sort out, like, because I knew my drink and using was different to everyone else's, like, you know, I said I wanted to do it more, like, and, yeah. and when it, I never forget that feeling, like, of, you know, we were talking this morning just about being caught on a Sunday and the off licenses, yeah. off licenses, yeah. all that. Yeah. I get some tables banging, I don't even believe in God, you know, yeah. this poxy thing. And like, but I never ever forget that feeling of when a host party and all you want is more, it could be fucking eight in the morning and you can't get more and there's no drink, mm. you haven't even got a fan. And that feeling of my whole world is crumbling around me, man. It's mad, you know, isn't it? Everything sets in, man. And you're depressed off your head, and you're thinking, I know about 1200 quid, and you're going, mm, my head is melted, thinking of everything then, like, and if I get off this person, I might be able to pay that person. Yeah, it's just, 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 and you promise, you promise the world to people, man. You promise the world, no, I have 500 quid coming to me there tomorrow, man, if you give it to me, no, I'll pay it tomorrow. And like, I never forget that feeling of, you know, you're strung out on a gaff, man, and you get something, something comes through, and it's like the best thing since sliced pan, you know. Or there was many times where we had yeah, gas, we'd have plenty of coke, like, but we don't drink, you know. And he'd be just too fucking tweet, you want a bit of drink to melly out, and never forget the Middle first drink. Yeah. And he'd be like, oh, thank you, man. And you'd be, you'd be like, all right, who's going, and like, you, like, I'd have coke most of the time, and I'd be like, I'm not going to the shop anyway. Because yeah, I have to, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, I just couldn't walk out. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But like, you know, I would be who's going to the yeah. shop, you know, like, and we were in the gaff mostly that was close to the shop, but like that first sip, and you'd be like, oh, the relief, man. And you, like, jeez, I could all five, ten grand at the time for different things, and you'd be like, what was I worrying about? You know, everything's all right, man. No matter what was going on in my life, once I could get two or three drinks into me. What was that? That's when you know you're an addict. Do you know what I mean? But we didn't know you're an no, addict. No, man, you People didn't. People just think it's normal. 100%, man, you know, and, and it's not normal. And when Covid hit, like, when Covid hit, I went working with these mad block players, like, and I thought it was the best thing ever, man. Mm. We used to be flat out drinking, flat out drinking during work, before work, mm. like, and I was like, this is it, man, you know. But first they were coming to look for wages, like, and they'd be like, look, I got this amount. So we'd spread it out evenly, you know. And don't worry, no, we won't be short drink. Like it was a mad thing, man. I actually loved, I loved going drinking with him because he was, I suppose he, I would look at this guy and say, fuck, at least I'm not that bad. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you justify my eye, go, at least I'm not like him, you know. And like, oh man, just lying and deceitfulness. And it brought me back to, like, man, I, hurt, I actually hurt my ex a lot, man, when she was pregnant, you know. And like, I suppose powerlessness came into it again, mm. where I would say, right, I'm not going to do coke, because she's pregnant. I said, look, I'm just going to have a couple of drinks. Mm. One time stands out to me, very big man, you know, we had a bunch of lads on a pool party, like in, blow up pool, you know, like when I had some fucking mansion with a pool, like, you know, just fucking kiss your thinking about it. And um, <laughs> blow up the little pool of the back of the gas, like, and I drink. Was, yeah, 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 yeah. Around fucking lounge at the yeah. pool, like, and drinks brought out, cocktails brought out. And, and I'd say 10 bottles of Corona, like, and the boys were getting coked in, like, you know, and I was on a promise. I said, I'm not going to do coke. Text the buddy, leave us out of line in the garage, yeah. you know. And, like, my ex, no, sauce, like, I went we did have a line, came out, she made the fucking line. I said, oh, fuck you, know, that's the thing, you know, you just blow them off. She's pregnant, man, you know, and drove the car, like, she got a taxi back. I can remember driving the car. I wasn't too far from the gaff, like driving the car was, I, I would just, it was very selfish, like, you know, very selfish getting in the car, I'll call it drugs, but once I had anything in my body, that's like, it. You know, I'd tell you here, well, I'm never doing that again. Yeah. You give me two points, man, I'm doing the car like that. Mm. I used to love driving other people's cars because it wasn't my car, mm. you know what I mean? And like, I remember I drove, driving up, I ordered Chinese food or something, for some reason, and I had no cash or something, I just ran out, I don't remember that. Back to the gaff, I never like, and she was on the heat, man, I was like, and like everyone was like, is she all right? And I was so selfish at the time. And I was like, everyone's asking, is she all right? No one's asking, am I all right? Mm. That's the selfishness yeah. I was in. And I never forget that night, man. You know, I got a quarter dropped up. And um, she was crying in my bedroom, you know. And I slept in the other bedroom, slept in that quarter yeah. the whole night to myself. Like, you know, just sitting in the room being like, what sort of piece of shit am I, you know? No one like that, me sniffing is why she's upset, like, and I was just, just wanting to do it, like, again, again, man. And 
and bad feeling, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, and like just using and using, like, and hurting, man. You know, and I specifically remember a time I literally pole at the time, you know, mm. and I was flat out. Um, once in the day, my boss like, yeah, let's tell everyone we have to go to the bank and we have to get a few points. Uh, Grand, so we get two lines. Go, I said, this old Sandy, uh, of how insane it was, like, you know, I was like, yeah, look, we're taking two lines off because I have to go home sober to the ex, you know, to the ex partner at the time, you know. So, Grant, up the fucking nostrils, boom, balloon, but it's like, you know, in the car, and the crew's room, and two points here, two points, so we have two points here, we're going to be more, be wide to us, like, you know, insanity, like. I had my second bag anyway, I said, I'm still up, like, I said, I have to get a couple of drinks into me before I go back, you know, I can't, it's can't go back like this, you know. And she was like, where are you? I was like, I'm walking there, it's in her pictures of building sites, just, like, lying, like, and she was like, that's not your site, like, you know, and there's lying, man, and you feel like shit, man, you know what yeah. I mean? You're trying to, like, do you know what I mean? Like, just, being dishonest, man, it just makes you so dishonest, man, just to drink and you want to Every drink. Every addict has a rock bomb, don't they? Mm. Like, what was your rock bomb? I'm sure you've had many, many a rock many bombs, but to a point man. where you said, right, well, that's it. What tweaked it for you? Jeez, like? oh, man, I have to think, man, because, it, like, I had many rock bottoms, I'd say, you know? I suppose it was my first rock, rock bottom, walking around Dublin City, one of the nights, you know? Mm. Fell in here, fell tried to have his way with me, like, you know? And, um, he let me charge his phone in his house or something. When he was leaving, he was giving me the phone. He was like, oh, you have big dick. Went to grab me. He was with my box and ran, like, you know? Smoke crack that, that night in Dublin City, you know? And um, I was walking on the roads, man. And Yeah, it was just scary, you know? It really was scary, mm -hmm. like, because I walked Cork City a couple of times, you know, and picking up fag butts and smoking them and stuff, like, and I thought that was my rock bottom, like, and I'd go back, I'd go back then, like, and I go back to meetings, like, and I'd be like, oh, this man, stuff happened to me, like, and I go back, I'd go back at it again, I mm -hmm. suppose, you know? But, like, that time, I was on the coke working with the lads. I just had a neck and knees double, so I'd come for some white lemonade, neck knock on the back, like, you know? And uh, I paddled five, five or six, I'm like, I was fucking twisted, it's like, time yeah. to go out in the car, coming up the road, anyway, <laughs> being up the road, like, turned the thing, boof, hit the ditch, hit the other side of the ditch. I was grand, the car was just about bobbing around, you know. One of the lads was behind us in a motorbike, he said, you were like the Flintstones come up the road and the fucking thing. And the buddy next to me was roaring, shouting, and I covered him with own blood, you know. And I was like, fuck, man. I panicked. I rang an ambulance for him, you know. And uh, the tunnel, he was only after breaking his nose. Do you know, he hit his, he wasn't wearing a seatbelt. And he, he was drinking his rhythm and fucking everywhere, like, you know. And um, the guards didn't come for 40 minutes, I was inside the house by the time they came. I suppose I could talk all day about war stories, yeah. like, but um, I could talk all day about war, war stories, but like I could talk a bit about how it came into recovery, like, you know. Um, I suppose I got involved in stuff I always thought I wanted to be involved in, and when I saw what went on behind closed doors, I didn't want to be involved in it, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, people I looked up to, when I saw what actually went on, I said, no, not for me, man. And something I had to give, I went through something terrible there, dropping stuff for some fella, and yeah. it was used, and, and because I tried recovery, I tried to give up. Mm. I suppose the breaking point for me was I got a bad beating with a hurley once upon a time. Yeah. And I went to my first thing, willingly. Will I wanted to be there. I was limped in the door, was a bit for fucking two days, I'd say, after I got that beating. Over money, of course, you know. I went in and I saw a fella doing the chair. He was, um, I would have known him from, we would have used together and I would have known him from our own <coughs> before yeah. recovery. Like, And I said, he's talking about all that. I said, maybe if he could, but I can do it. And you know when you're first in the meeting, you're just bah, bah. <laughs> I'm flat out, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're just, you don't know the lingo, as one of the lads says yeah. to me, you know? And like, I started all the meetings, and I'd come in for two or three weeks, gone, come in for two or three weeks, gone. I couldn't stick it, man, I couldn't surrender. You know, yeah. I was still yeah. smoking weed or something. I was still holding on to everything, like, and that's when I went through that experience. I ended up doing Killarney, I was off drink, dropping stuff I shouldn't have been, ended up sniffing and having to drive back from Killarney or whatever. Mm -hmm. A bad experience I had, really bad. I rang a treatment centre the next day, you know, and I told her my story, and she said, yeah, look, that's why the, the program is 14,000 euro. <laughs> I was like, the cheek of this woman, I said, mm -hmm. I owe about 20 grand, like, I, yeah. I don't have 14 hanging around, like, but like, obviously, the lads put me wide, you can get funding and stuff like that, you know, and so like, I actually got in fairly fast, I'd say, I got in about 
eight weeks, I'd say. Eight weeks, I was into a treatment centre. Mm-hmm. Like, within eight weeks, I was in, I had a bed, like, of course, I'd had a bed in there. Before I went in, I said, well, if I go off, for good, I'm going to have a mad when I went yeah, in there. Yeah. raw, man. It was rough, you know. And um, I suppose going in there, going in there, my emotion, my um, my motives were, I don't know, did I just want my ex back, like, the mother of my child and my child back in my life because they weren't in my life, you know. Yeah. They left, like, and I, I thought it was great at the time. Very sad, like, I thought it was great at the time and it wasn't long realising what had happened, like, you know. And I, so I got in there anyway and, and I got honest. I actually got honest in there, like, you know, with a lot of things, but, like, I got up to a lot of stuff in there I shouldn't have been, you know. I was using in there, like, I was using other people's tablets that they were prescribed, you know. Yeah. I was fucking taking syrup and I was up in the room reading spiritual books on <laughs> them, like, you know, mm. just absolute insanity, like, we were getting bags of fucking sweets and coke dropped off to, yeah. the, to the place. Dang, it was this big thing to drop off, you know. Was oh, fucking, yeah, 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 you know, just sweets yeah, and stuff, yeah, like, yeah. fucking chickadees and shit like that, you know. Mm. And I thought I'd be doing the right stuff in there, like, but I was insane in there, you know, I was telling people, oh, I, I know the good meetings, know how you're going to get sober when you get out of here, mm. you know. I was just clean and crazy, is the word, I suppose, I heard somebody say that before, and after 10, I was in there 10 weeks, and I was saying to myself, like, well, when I go back out here, you know, like, there'll be no drinking and they after, you know, I said, I'm going to have to, like, it was setting in, like, it was setting yeah. in, that, like, this is real, Connor, you know, mm. this is real, man, so, so I snuck out and I was treating said I was going for a couple of cans, you know, I made the decision one day. I hopped the wall, I was going all around the fields, I was covered by fields, and I got down the very end and I just looked up by chance and two people saw me, so I came back, you know. So I didn't go for the cans, like, and the next day anyway, like, they came up, to, or uh, they breathalyzed me that night, like, and I said, look, I didn't go for, like, just drinking, they searched my room and stuff. And um, I suppose Monday when they came back then, they were like, look, you, like, do you want to go, like, you know, you seem like a fellow who wants to go, like I said. Yeah, I suppose I said I do want to go, like, but I should have to get the fuck out of there, like, mm. you know what I mean? I should have went to recovery living, like yeah. a lot of people were doing, you know. Yeah. I opted out of that option, I just wanted to get straight back. I wasn't ready, man, you know. And um, when I came out of treatment, all I wanted to do was drink news, man. You know, I was a 22 year old coming out of treatment centre, I was like, fuck me. I suppose part of my head was still saying, I'm too young for this shit, man. Yeah. It has yeah. to be a way, I can do something. Yeah. It has to be a way. Yeah. And all I wanted to do was drink and news when I came out of rehab, you know. And I told no bit, I went to meetings and said, oh, I'm doing great, my life is amazing. It wasn't like, oh, yeah, it was re-. Because I thought, because I thought going through treatment that I shouldn't feel this way, you know? Mm. I thought, come, when you go to rehab and you come out, you're grand. Yeah. Sort, that's yeah. it. Recovery. Yeah. Sound, mm. bud. You know what I mean? Just the start of it, man. I learned, like, you know, after four weeks I drank, man. She was away in Waterford with her friends. Was there learn, like, obviously I've never been to treatment, but was there learn much about your head in treatment, you know what I mean? Well, we really, obviously we love the means we learn about yeah. the support of the mind. Is it more of a discipline down, a discipline thing down the treatment rather than? I suppose there is a lot of helpful stuff in there. Like it would have helped you with watch your triggers. Like and you, the one on one counselling can be very good. Like you yeah. always get out. I actually didn't know you didn't go to treatment, mm. and like that everybody has to go to treatment. Yeah, bother, no, bother, know? yeah, bother. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. the support, like there's plenty of support out there for people. Yeah. Like you know. You don't, you don't have to go to treatment to get recovery, like, mm. you know what I mean? And some people just need to break away from society, like, mm. it depends on your situation, like. But I suppose they learn, it helps you learn about behaviours and, like, from what I can remember, like, you do it, what you do a step one in there, mm. but it's different to the step one that we would do, you mm. know? It's like, it's actually a massive writing thing you would do, like, about preoccupy. You learn about your addiction, I suppose, mm. in there. You learn what your triggers are, what your trauma, like, you learn to get out some of your traumas. You tell your first chair in there, yeah. like, you know, or you just ramble for a fucking age. Mm-hmm. Like, and um, it gets a bit of discipline in your life, you're right, I suppose. I never had any discipline in my life, you know. I never even made a bed before I went to treatment. Yeah. My, my attitude was like, why would I make the bed if I went to own me? I didn't get into it, you know. Yeah. You were fed well in there, like, and, but that was the big thing, like, discipline, you're right, I suppose, in there, you know. And, like, you taught you to work together as a group like you know what I mean and support one another so exactly. you know what I mean yeah. like, that's what it's all about man is mm. support like and there's so much support out there today for people it's mm. mad you only realise when you're sober and yeah then, like even 
I live in a double now, like I moved up to actually be closer to my son, like and mm. you look seeing like the amount of support that's around here, you know yeah. what I mean? Like in just in Bally Mun and Santry alone, mm. like there's fantastic there's plenty of support there for the, for people that want it, you yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah. and I suppose so treatment, I came out of treatment and I relapsed and I done some crazy stuff in the car and I shouldn't have done, you know, and I got caught and uh, I got banned off the road for two years, man. I was like sick, man, you know, still off the road, no man. It was two, about two months to be back on the road, right. looking forward to it, man. Mm-hmm. I struggled to accept that a lot, Dean. Mm-hmm. And I suppose it was a slippery slope after that, man, you know. My ex and my son weren't long getting out, gone from my life again, you know, and I'll never forget the next day, like, I was walking the streets of Cork City picking up fag butts and drinking. Yeah. Can drink, you know, the cans are on the side of the road and stuff, you know. Just the thinking, like, proper the gregs, there was a it is, man. Like, just think, like, and like, towards the end, like, did you? I wasn't, I wasn't attracted to pole drinking, man. Like, at, at this stage, man, I wanted to be drinking cans around the road and mm. dirty drinking, like, yeah. that's what I wanted, yeah, 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 sure. you know what I mean? I was the pole wasn't that attractive to me mm. anymore, like, like, drinking on the bridge with the lads, like, is what I and I done many times, man. And mm. So, like. After that, my head was melted by, you know what I mean? Like, like she was like, I'm leaving. I was like, go on, so just leave, you know? And I just walked up the door, man. I stole my dad's, my dad's a pensioner, man. I stole his bank card straight out the door, man. Bad, like, you know, I had no phone. My phone was broken. I loved it. Nobody could get on to me, you know? And it's very sad looking back, man. And what I got up to, and it's just madness, man, you know? And I came back. Like, and the only time I ever came back was when the money ran out, man, you yeah. know, ironically. Like, and I came back, I started going to meetings again. And, Got in a lot of trouble, I like, ended up owing a lot of money for something. In, like, while I was going to the rooms and stuff. I, I had a bad relapse and ended up owing a lot of money for stuff. And my head was melted over, man. You know, I really mm. was. I was in the meetings, like, and you remember, like, I'm coming down to the house, like, and I was like, man, it's a fairy. Like, luckily, there were empty threats, like, you know, but this kept going. And eventually, I came in and I started going through the book. I asked the fellow to be my sponsor. And like, I wouldn't mind the first thing I ever said to this guy years ago was like, or probably a year or two, was like, surely you still smoke a bit of weed, no man, you know, yeah. I'm off the drink, I'm off the coke, like, and just in this insanity, like, you know. And I asked this, I asked the fella to be my sponsor, like, and go through the book, and I started, I going through the book with him, like, and I came to Dublin one of the time, I came to Dublin on my birthday, I came to Dublin on my birthday to see my son, and I had the decision I was going to drink, you know. And I was on the book at this day, and I made the decision I was going to drink. Told no, I actually rang my sponsor and told him I was going to, I feel like going for a drink. And um, he said to me, he told me this stuff, and I just said, yeah, 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 yeah. I, the decision was made, you know, when you made the yeah. decision. And I drank, man. And um, I drank that time, and I told nobody, I told absolutely nobody about it, like, you know, and it happened again two weeks after. Lang, I was drunk, man, getting fucking. Boxed head off by a bouncer and it's just I wasn't even in the place. I was just down the bottom of the steps, taunted him with a bag of bottles. Like, you know, I was shouting uh, bad words in Polish. I don't even know what man Polish like, you know. And I you know, like I blacked out, man. I woke up in Cork on the bus. Thank God, like bad <coughs> broken bottles with me, and a Santa hat, madness. And I remember the uh, it'll be ringing me the next day. My phone, my car was blocked. I had fifty quid on my car, like. And uh, my car was blocked, so it was Temple Bar, tried for 80, you know, Temple Bar, tried for 70. I was training with lower moons all the time, you know. Air coach denied three times. I don't know, your man must have let me on the bus, thank God. Like, you yeah. know, something like heat, man. Because I tried to get a taxi home when I got back, and the 50 wouldn't send you, man. To go to the guard station, it was a big deal, man. And, like, I told nobody that, you know. I kept going to meetings, and every now and then I would hear it pop up, you know. Ah, oh, if you just see for relapse, you would eat you up alive, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, my head was wrecked over, man, you know, and eventually I got a PlayStation as well around my step four and I well, didn't want to look at it. And eventually I picked up again, man, you know, and within a couple of weeks I ended up going to Spain. I ended up fucking off to Spain. I was going for a couple of days holiday and I ended up going out to Magaluf to meet one of the lads, you know, and Magaluf is not the place for that. God, I got a mm. drug addict, you know, and very quickly turned sour, man, like on my way over, like I won't go too much into it, I'll just share on my way over, man. I got in a lot of trouble and I got fucked out of the airport. I got beat around the place yeah. by the Guardia Civil, you know, yeah. the bollocks. Like, mm. in my connecting flight, I ended up roaming the streets. I found the hostel the same. and it was rough, man. It set the tone for my holiday over there, you know. It was no fucking holiday, man. Mm. I stuck there for about three weeks in total. It was meant to be a four-day holiday. 
first week I got by, you know, and after that I didn't manage to sleep in a rough around the place and get a job for a day, I get paid, I throw up a I was like fucked out. It was rough, man. Mm. I, like that was my lad, that was that was where I gained acceptance around my addiction being, you know, it really was man. Like I was born and crying, I was drinking and using the place and I was just thinking about my love my beautiful son, like, you know. Yeah. Thinking about it, like what am I doing? Like yeah, I should be yeah. on home with my son, you know. Mm. No one the jig was up, like, you know, for me, every time I relapsed since I came into recovery, I knew the jig was up, like, you know. I was it was a different they talk about it, a head full of head full of air and a belly full of drink is what they say in air, like and it's true, man. They say air and room my drinking, you know, I always find that one funny, like, because you'd be just thinking, be sitting there drinking or using like this. It's not for me, it should right. be in the yeah. meeting, like, yeah, 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 yeah. it should be in the yeah. meeting. Like. But that's what the meeting will do to you. Mm, and it's the meeting, brilliant. The it, you know what I mean? The toilet takes you away from that, mm. that misery. But you two choices, come back or stay out there and be a just a fucking right. ball of pain. Mm. So just take us to where, so after Spain, was that the, the, the last surrender, was it? My surrender was Spain, man. Mm. My surrender was Spain. I remember my last drink. I think I smoked a joint when I came back two days after yeah. or something. Like, that was it, man. That was it. I was my so when I came back mm. with a hunger for the book, man, you know. And I sat down with my sponsor every week and I done what people told me to do, man. Mm. You know, I really done what people told me. I had enough, man. Yeah. Once I threw in the toll, I had enough, man. And like it was hard, man, you know, when you're first coming around, like it's 50 50. Am I going to fucking, am I going to go to a meeting? Am I going to go on the piss, you know? Heads wrecked, like, you know. Yeah. I came back as well and went straight working, like, and my head was melted, man, you know, when I mm. first came back, like. You know, you'd be fit like you. I was just broken, like you know. I was physically, mentally, spiritually broken, yeah. man. You know, yeah. up in a heap, like you know. But I just, I came back and I done everything that I was meant to do when I came back. You know, I went to my meetings, man. I done my gig with my sponsor, man. And it just started getting easier and easier for me. You know, the slowly it does, isn't mm, it? Like, yeah. I was, I was always told trust the process. Exactly, know? man. Yeah. I was trying to trust it for a long time, man, but just things weren't getting easier. Mm. And then, then eventually, after about three, four months, man, I was like, well, okay, scene changes. Things are getting different. Mm. Yeah. I'm not it hits the yeah. man. Yeah. Because, you know? yeah. like, you're going through the first couple of steps, you're sponsored. Mm. Oh, what? You don't know what, exactly. is, what it is, like, you know mm. what I mean? Like, and I was going through with my sponsor, and slowly, my life started to get a bit easier for me, mm. you know, I was able to deal with things a bit differently, like, you know what I mean? And, like, Step four, I went through my step four and stuff like and it was good to get down on paper all the stuff that I was holding in my body, like hold, you know what I mean? Holding my head, it's good to get down. I had a beautiful experience with my step five, you know, get the burn and oh, it was brilliant, man. Going through the work, I, like I put a lot of work into my recovery team and it yeah. just paid off, you know. So, and I, I done like I done everything that was asked of me in here, like and it's paid off a lot, man, you know, and where it's paid off most is up here, man. Absolutely. I see in my head, man. I can close my eyes and there's a bit of peace in it. 100%. Like, if it's just, just going back to where, where you started, where you, you had nothing to drinking cans off and picking up smoke books mm. to smoke and crack to being locked up basically mm. in cells and being homeless to where you are now, man. You're a walking man, you've your son in your life, mm. you're going to conventions, you have a support network behind you, mm. you know, you have a roof over your head. Everyone's back in your life that you need in your life, you know mm. what I mean? Life is beautiful, it is, is, man. isn't it? And yeah, it's only yeah, when you man. see, when you, the more you say it, the more you think about it, the things that you're gaining from it, it's like, we, we never want to go back to that pain and misery ever again. Yeah, ever again.